Hello and welcome to Insight of Thermology. This is Dr. Amrit welcoming you to the part 2 of B scan series. In part 2 of the B scan series, we will be studying the examination technique in detail, starting with the positioning of the patient. For the purpose of patient, the patient is usually seated in a reclining chair of adjustable height and degree. The majority of the examinations are performed in this position or sometimes also in the supine position. However, sitting positions are also very useful in a series of examinations such as when the patient is having silicone oil or when the patient is having air in AC. Because in such conditions, if we make the patient to lie down supine, the air and also the uh, the the silicone oil is going to come upwards and will give us disturbed echoes during the purpose of during the process of B scan. Therefore, in such conditions, B scan can be done in sitting uh, posture. However, the best position is a supine position or a semi reclining position. The second thing to know in a B scan is the probe orientation. The probe is often marked with a white mark like this or a red mark as shown over here. The orientation of the probe as to where this mark lies is very important to understand when we are doing the B scan. The position of the marker on the probe, whether it is the red color marker or it is the white color marker on the probe, is going to indicate which part of the eyeball is located in the superior part of the scan. For example, in this case, as we can see, this is the probe and the marker is present superiorly. And this way the probe is actually scanning a slice of the eye that means the rays are coming like this and we are getting an image like this in which as we can see the superior part of mark is at d and therefore the superior part of the scan is also at d and the e part corresponds to the inferior part of the scan and then we have the central c part where the uh, the resolution will be maximum so that is the importance of the marker wherever the marker is present on the eye that will actually tell us where ex what is the superior most part of the scan. Based on the position of the probe and based on the position of the marker on the probe, the B scan can be divided into three types of scans. Number one, the number one is the axial scan in which the B scan probe is actually present directly onto the center of the cornea with the eyelids closed or with the eyelids open, right? So that is called the axial scan. In the axial scan, whenever we place the probe directly onto the cornea vertically, the probe marking should be superior. However, when we are putting the probe horizontally, the probe marking should be towards the nose or nasally. So whenever the probe is placed directly onto the cornea, we are taking the axial scan. Now the second type of scan is the transverse scan. In a transverse scan, the marker or the probe is placed parallel to the limbus. That means if we are placing it superiorly onto the limbus, it will be placed in such a way that it is parallel to the superior limbus. And when we are placing it along the nasal or the temporal limbus, again they will be placed in such a way that they are parallel to the limbus right now in the superior and in the inferior position the mark will be always nasally whereas in the temporal and the nasal positions of the probe in a transverse scan the marking will be present superiorly the third type of scan is a longitudinal scan well while doing a longitudinal scan the probe position is actually perpendicular to the limbus of the eye so if this is the limbus we can see the probe position is actually perpendicular to the limbus at every clock hour and the marker which is marked in red over here they are all positioned in such a way that they are pointing towards the cornea right now let us see all these three types of scan in detail one by one the first type of scan is the axial scan. As I already told you, while doing an axial scan, the probe is placed directly onto the cornea, directly in the center. So we are actually in an axial scan. We are imaging the direct central part of the eye. Okay. Now, in a vertical type of axial scan, 
axial scan is when we put it in the center and vertical is when we have aligned the probe vertically with the mark which is present superiorly right so remember i told you whenever the probe is placed vertically the marker should always be superior so as we can see this is a patient with an eye and we have placed the probe directly onto the cornea that means we have placed the probe axially and the marker is superiorly that means this is a vertical axial scan now this vertical axial scan is centered in such a way that we are taking a slice in the vertical direction like this right so this slice is going to correspond to this part of the retina which is marked with this white line as you can see this is a vertical slice which is passing through the optic disc right so this is the vertical axial scan now how will the scan look like so if this is a scan we should know that in a vertical axial scan which is right at the center in the center we are going to have the optic nerve right so in the vertical axial scan we are going to have the optic nerve and the surrounding retina will be superior and inferior to it so now in the vertical scan the marker is present where the marker is present at 12 o'clock that is superiorly therefore the superior part of the scan is also showing the 12 o'clock part of the or the superior part of this slice however the down part will be the six o'clock or the inferior part of the slice right so if you represent this fundus image into the scan this part is represented superiorly this part is represented inferiorly and the optic disc is represented in the center next coming to the horizontal axial scan that what i mean to say is that if now we place this probe in such a way that it lies on the cornea that is axial scan but in a horizontal fashion that means the probe marker is now placed in where towards the nose that is nasally so we are going to take a section like this onto the retina right so this is the fundus image and this is our probe which is placed in a transverse way okay but on the cornea since it's placed on the cornea it is axial and because it's placed horizontally it is a horizontal axial scan right now this horizontal axial scan is actually going to take a slice like this okay right at the center of the fundus so this is what is shown in this picture so what are we going to see at the top as i told you that the marker will decide wherever the marker is present that part will be shown on the top of the scan so here the marker is present nasally and in the nasal part what do we have we have the disc and that is the reason the optic nerve shadow is shown at the top of the scan right now in the center part what is there we have the macula therefore in the center we are seeing the macula and then laterally as you go it will be the lateral rectus muscle which will get inserted and therefore we are seeing the lateral rectus muscle in the inferior part of the scan right so horizontal axial scan and vertical axial scan are two different types of axial scan in which we are putting the probe directly onto the cornea but the probe positions are different in the horizontal we place it nasally in the vertical scan we are placing it where superiorly therefore the top part of the scan will show the part where the marker is present so in a vertical axial scan it is the superior part and in the horizontal axial scan we will have the optic nerve superiorly because the probe is present nasally and even the optic nerve is present nasally i hope that is clear now the next type of scan that we have is the longitudinal b scan or the longitudinal type of scan now in the longitudinal type of scan as i told you the probe is going to be placed in such a position that at every point on the limbus it is perpendicular to the limbus so as you can see here it is perpendicular this is perpendicular 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 at all the clock hours it is perpendicular and the marker will be directed always towards the cornea or towards the limbus right so this is a picture of a patient in which we are doing a longitudinal b scan you can see that the probe is not placed onto the cornea right it is not in the center so definitely this is not an axial scan now why do i say that this is a longitudinal scan is because 
we can see that we have placed this probe perpendicular to this cornea or to this limbus and the probe position the marker position is superiorly so what i mean to say is we are going to get a slice like this in this case right now in this case because we wanted to actually image the superior meridian right so because the what the longitudinal scan is a uh, always the perpendicular scan okay to the limbus so we have placed the probe in such a way we are actually placed the probe at six o'clock position right so whenever we want to examine one meridian we will place the transducer or the probe at the diametrically opposite meridian so we want to uh, if we want to examine the 12 o'clock meridian we will be placing the probe at six o'clock meridian like this right so suppose the same patient right which i have shown over here we have placed the probe at six o'clock position so the part of the retina that we are scanning is the 12 o'clock meridian in the longitudinal fashion right so the same way if we put if we actually uh, consider this fundus diagram in the form of image what do we see the superior part of the scan will show the most anterior most part why because the probe is towards the cornea so what i mean to say is if this was our eyeball with the cornea and we have placed the probe over here with the marker towards the cornea now if the marker is present towards the cornea what does it mean the part that we are going to see in the scan is also going to be the most anterior most part in a longitudinal scan right why it is most anterior most part because the cornea is more anterior right and the retina is more posterior so when we are putting the marker towards the cornea it means the top of the scan will indicate the anterior most part of the scan so in this case therefore we are seeing the superior rectus muscle because the superior rectus muscle is placed anteriorly okay and then in the posterior most part is the optic nerve so therefore the optic nerve is shown in the inferior part and then any pathology in between will be represented subsequently now suppose we had a lesion over here say we had a mass over here okay at 12 o'clock meridian right so we will be seeing that mass somewhere here in the b scan so i hope that is clear so whenever we want to uh, examine one meridian longitudinally we have to place the probe in the diametrically opposite part opposite meridian and the position of the marker should always be towards the cornea right so this is our this is the longitudinal scan now the next type of scan is actually the transverse scan now in a case of transverse scan the probe is actually placed if you notice here parallel to the limbus the limbus is like this and the probes positions are also making a circle around it that means it is parallel to the limbus right so as you can see here the probe is placed parallel to the limbus at any point here the limbus position is like this vertical so the probe is also placed vertical here the limbus is oblique so the probe is also oblique here the limbus is uh, uh, horizontal so the probe is also horizontal so at any point the probe if it is parallel to the limbus then it is called a transverse scan now the second the second question is where will be the marker in a transverse scan in a transverse scan if you see up and down the marker will be always towards the nose right and whenever we have placed the uh, probe vertically like this the marker will be superior right so in the vertical locations marker is superior and in the horizontal locations the marker is always nasal so this is our this is the transverse scan so let us uh, say the, so let us look at the same patient over here now if you can see the marker has now moved like this where is the marker present the marker is present now nasally right and we have put our probe in a transverse fashion parallel to this limbus right so our rays will be now coming like this and we will be taking a slice in this way on the retina and this is called a transverse slice or a transverse scan now since our marker is present at three o'clock position the topmost part of the b scan will be the three o'clock position why because nasally we are putting the marker where nasally and in this eye the nasal part is here and this is the three o'clock meridian right so 
here we are seeing the three o'clock meridian now at this point diametrically opposite we have the nine o'clock so nine o'clock is shown in the inferior part and in the center what do we have we have the 12 o'clock meridian right so now you might be asking that we have placed the probe inferiorly at six o'clock but in the center we have 12 o'clock why because always it is the diametrically opposite meridian which is actually imaged so we have pro placed the probe transversely here with the marker present nasally and we are getting a section like this in which the 12 o'clock will be in the center 3 o'clock is here and 9 o'clock is actually down now as we are doing the transverse scan as shown over here we can see that the marker is present uh, nasally okay we have to actually move this probe gradually in the posterior direction what i mean to say is if this is our lip if this is the limbus gradually we have to move the probe towards uh, towards downwards and then gradually we have to go towards the fornix right so as shown over here if this is the eye initially the probe is present at the limbus right and now the probe is present somewhere in between and then finally we are going posteriorly even more by asking the patient to look upwards even more inferiorly we are trying to go so where are we going inferiorly we are trying to go towards the fornix now as you can see from this diagram when we have placed the probe towards uh, the limbus as shown here okay when we have placed the probe towards the limbus where are we getting the slice the slice that we are getting is the posterior slice although the limbus is present anteriorly however when we go towards the fornix more posteriorly the slice that we are getting is the more anterior slice right this is because of the passage the way they are passing they are actually imaging the diametrically opposite location right so similarly when we are placing the probe in this picture at the limbus okay the slice that we are actually getting from the limbus is a more posterior slide okay so if this was your optic nerve and this is your ora serrata equator and this is the posterior pole circle okay the circle represents the posterior pole okay it will have the optic nerve and its vessels okay so whenever we are placing and doing the transverse scan anteriorly that means near the limbus the scan that we are getting is from the posterior pole okay now when we go midway that is towards the equator we are getting it from the diametrically opposite equator but as you go posteriorly towards the fornix the scan will become more anterior so at six o'clock equator we are getting 12 o'clock more anterior almost near ura serrata and equator right so this is what is represented here the clock our proposition and the clock area which is screen so when we are putting it at at suppose six o'clock limbus we are getting a 12 o'clock posterior view when we put it at six o'clock equator we are getting a 12 o'clock equator view when we are getting at six o'clock fornix we will have a 12 o'clock anterior view similarly in the horizontal positions also three o'clock limbus nine o'clock posterior three o'clock equator will correspond to the nine o'clock equator and when you place it in the fornix we are actually screening the nine o'clock anterior part of the image of the b scan so with this working knowledge of what is an axial scan and what does it represent what is a transverse scan and how is it done from limbus to the fornix and what is a longitudinal scan and how is it represented in every meridian and using that working knowledge what we are doing is we are doing a topographic b scan evaluation right so what we do is that by using first the transverse scan we will find out what what exactly is the gross shape as well as the lateral extent of any lesion right so if we have a lesion at the posterior pole like this so which type of scan will tell you about the lateral extent of this lesion okay so what is this type of slice it is a transverse slice so which type of scan will tell you about that it is a transverse scan right similarly if there's a tumor the basal diameter of any three dimensional lesion will be derived from this type of scan that is a transverse scan however using the longitudinal approach i can tell how much is the length or how much is the anterior posterior extension of this lesion so what i mean to say is if this is our retina 
I want to know this is the optic nerve and over here we have the ora serrata and the equator. Now I want to know till what level uh, is it extending anterior posteriorly? Is it extending from ora serrata right up to the disc or does it stop at the equator or is it between the equator and between the disc? Right. So what I am trying to find out is the anterior posterior dimension of that lesion. Okay. Similar lesion as shown over here. So to get that anterior posterior extent of the lesion, the type of scan that I have to do now is the longitudinal scan. So this is called the topographic B scan evaluation in which by using the different types of scans, we can find out which what is the lateral extent, what is the basal diameter and what is the anterior posterior extent or the dimension of a lesion. After we have done the topographic B scan, the next type of B scan that we do is the quantitative type of the B scan. So in quantitative by type of B scan, there are three parameters that we notice. The first is the reflectivity of the B scan. The second is the internal structure and third is the attenuation of any lesion. So once we are assessing these three parameters of any lesion, what we are assessing is the quantitative parameters of the B scan. The first thing is the reflectivity, right? So as I already told you that the acoustic wave, when it is reflected, it is called an echo. And that echo is actually represented in a form of a spike on an A scan and in a form of a dot on a B scan, right? So the reflectivity is also evaluated by observing that spike height on an A scan vector overlay and the signal brightness on the B scan. Right. So the normal ocular structure, which is actually having the highest reflectivity is our sclera, which is taken to be about 100 percent. So this is how this is the way we can actually divide the reflectivity. Right. So the reflectivities which are very close to the baseline like this, that means about zero to five percent. They are called extremely low reflectivity. Right. Something between five to 20 is low. 20 to 40 percent is called medium low and 40 to 60 percent is called the average type of reflectivity. Now from there the high reflectivity will start. So from 60 to 80 is medium high, from 80 to 95 is high and anything above 95 to 100 percent is extremely high. The sclera is actually considered to have about 100 percent reflectivity. Now let us do a quantitative B scan analysis using this A scan overlay of a B scan patient. Now, as you can see over here, this is the A scan overlay and this central line probably represents the 50% of reflectivity. Now we know that 50% will come under almost uh, the average type of reflectivity. Now all the spikes which are below this 50% will come under the low to medium reflectivity. And the ones which are above this will be the high reflectivity. So as we can see in the above one here, the reflectivity and the echoes are actually present above this line. And therefore, this indicates the high reflectivity. In the second image, however, we can see that the echoes are now present below this moderate or below this average line as seen over here. Right. So these are the echoes and they're very close to the baseline. So this indicates a low reflectivity on a B scan. The second parameter on the quantitative assessment of the B scan is the internal structure of a lesion. Right. This property is studying studied by basically noting the difference in the height and length of the A scan spikes and differences in the echo densities on the B scan. Right. So based on that, we can call it a regular internal structure or an irregular internal structure. So basically to tell you, it is nothing but a regular internal structure represents a uniform density or uniform uh, echoes. Right. Why? Because there is a consistency in that lesion. Right. So what I mean to say is if there is a lesion which is formed of same material inside, the echoes which are going to come from this type of a lesion will all be similar type of echoes and even on the B scan, they will be looking of similar brightness, right? So dot echoes will also be of same types. However, if there is a lesion in which part of the lesion is say cystic and part is vascular, part is solid and part is necrosed, the internal echoes that we get from the lesion also will be different on the A scan and also on the B scan. That means the dot echoes will also be different. 
at one point it might look more brighter at other point it might look less brighter so such an internal structure is called the heterogeneous internal structure and we are going to get in irregular internal echoes now let us look at this first uh, overlay uh, a scan overlay of a b scan patient now here we can see that the echoes are present and all these echoes are of the same amplitude and same length this is represented by the yellow arrow so let us uh, hope uh, let us see if this was the lesion which was present and we are doing a b scan of this lesion so the anterior border of the lesion is represented by this spike and the posterior border of the lesion say is represented by this spike now within the lesion however more or less all the waves are looking of similar height and length so what is, what does it mean it means that this is a this is a homogeneous structure with regular echoes right however have a look at this picture over here we can see even on the b scan the echoes are not of same type somewhere they are darker somewhere they are lighter okay and then on the a scan also we can see that few of the echoes here are bigger and few of the echoes are smaller so there is a difference which is represented by two arrows so what does it mean it is a heterogeneous lesion and the echoes are irregular type of echoes the third parameter in the quantitative assessment or the quantitative b scan is the attenuation or the sonic absorption now i already told you before that whenever the acoustic waves are passing through and a surface which is having impedance based upon the absorption and based upon the scattering of the sound waves what happens is the acoustic wave energy will decrease as it passes through that tissue so this decrease of the acoustic wave energy as it passes through the tissue because of the absorption or because of the scattering is called attenuation and when this acoustic waves are absorbed this is called sonic absorption right so this is represented by a progressive decrease of the reflectivity inside the examined tissue now reflectivity is nothing but the echoes right so when the loss of acoustic wave energy will occur what will happen the echoes will become weaker and as the echoes will become weaker we will get progressively the weaker echoes and this is called progressive decrease in the reflectivity now how is this attenuation measured the attenuation or the degree of sonic absorption is represented as the angle kappa now let us see what is meant by this angle kappa now this graph over here represents how this, these were the initial spikes the probe spikes and the spikes from the uh, uh, lens and finally this is the vitreous and then we are getting one spike and in the vitreous cavity we are getting this one spike which indicates that there is a lesion somewhere and this might be the first spike coming from the anterior part of the lesion and then gradually what is happening is because of the process of attenuation the spikes are becoming progressively weaker and weaker and touching the baseline right so this process of loss of acoustic energy is called the process of sonic absorption or the process of attenuation now as the sound energy is decreasing if we draw a line from the peak of this waves or the attenuated waves and find out the angle between this wave of attenuation and this horizontal line the angle is called the angle kappa right so what happens is when there is marked amount of this lot of um, of attenuation this lot of attenuation occurring what happens is the drop will be sudden right so this sudden drop will lead to an angle kappa of more than 45 degrees or it is a positive angle kappa right so this positive angle kappa or greater than 45 degrees indicate that the attenuating ability of that lesion or the mass is marked or is more right however when the attenuation is gradual and slow the angle kappa now in this condition would be actually less than 45 degrees right so when the angle kappa is less than 45 degrees it means that the mass is having more impedance or the mass does not have more capability to absorb in itself and therefore that mass has a weaker attenuation right and anything in between that is 45 is moderate so the angle greater than 45 is also called a positive angle kappa and this positive angle kappa is specifically seen in case of malignant melanoma and uh, less than 45 is called a weaker attenuation and this thing is seen in a nevus right 
So we can actually differentiate between a nevus and a malignant melanoma just by looking at the attenuation of the sound waves as they are passing through these lesions. The third type of B scan that we do is the kinetic B scan evaluation also called the dynamic B scan evaluation. In this we have three types of evaluations. The first is the after movement, second is the internal vascularity or the spontaneous vascularity of the lesion and third is the convection current. The first type of kinetic B scan evaluation is the after movement evaluation. It is determined by observing the motion of the lesion echoes following the cessation of the eye movements and since we are observing that particular lesion after the eye movement has taken place it is called after movement right now depending upon the extent of the movement the after movement may be classified as good restricted or no after movement at all now this after movement is basically used to differentiate between the vitreous detachment and the retinal detachment a vitreous detachment or the vitreous itself because of the liquefaction of the gel vitreous is quite mobile. So what happens is whenever the eye will move from left to right, the vitreous detachment will also move. A PVD will show more movement. That means if the patient moves towards the right side, if the patient looks toward the right side, the PVD might still be shaking on the B scan even after the patient has stopped uh, moving his eye. Similarly, when we tell the patient to look at the left side, the patient now is gazing toward the left side. Now, the PVD also will move and still will be moving because it is quite less dense compared to the uh, retina. However, a retina is more dense, right? So, retinal detachment whenever it's present, okay, suppose this is a retinal detachment and we ask the patient to move the eyeball from left to right and then observe the uh, movement of the retina we will notice that the movement the after movement will not be much right so in an rd we have restricted after movement and in a vitreous detachment we have a good after movement so this is a case of pvd so what happens is we tell the patient to look at one side and we observe the lesion now we want to differentiate uh, this from the rd so we tell the patient to look towards the opposite side and we will see that this one is actually moving right so the pvd is actually showing movement and good after movement however an rd for that matter will be more taut and more dense and therefore it shows restricted after movement now the second type of kinetic b scan evaluation is the evaluation of spontaneous internal vascularity okay and this thing is specifically applicable to tumors right in spontaneous internal vascularity let me clear one thing that we are not looking for a vascular lesion instead we are looking at a tumor diagnosis we are looking at a mask and if we are trying to find out whether there is any spontaneous motion seen on the a scan because of a blood flow through a blood vessel right so we are looking for the vascularization inside of the tumor right and why it is called spontaneous because the patient will be now fixing on a target and the probe will also be stationary neither the probe is moving nor the patient is moving and still we are going to get some low spikes on the a scan and why is this low spikes coming as no one so neither the probe is moving nor the patient is moving nor the eye is moving so why are we getting this low flickering spikes the low flickering spikes are coming because of the blood flow through that lesion right so whenever we observe such spontaneous internal vascularity uh, in a mass lesion it usually indicates towards a tumor and indicates towards the vascularity of that tumor right now the third type of kinetic B scan evaluation is the convection motion. This type of movement will occur because of the convection currents that will occur within the blood or the cholesterol debris, right? It is usually seen in long standing intraocular hemorrhage where there might be some cholesterol deposits or cystic lesions, you know, and coarse disease uh, in which there will be cholesterol deposits. So. Now, this image over here indicates uh, the internal spontaneous vascularization or the vascularity. So, we can see that this, uh, suppose this is an eye and we are doing a B scan. Neither the probe is moving nor the eye is moving, but still we are getting certain low spikes, you know, low reflectivity or the low spikes or low echoes, right? 
in the lesion in the deepest part of the lesion right so this indicates that there is an internal vascularization right and usually whenever such signs are present it indicates that either it's a malignant melanoma or any other kind of intratumor uh, vessels intratumoral vessels within that malignant melanoma and one more condition where such a spontaneous vascularization or spikes can be seen is in case of av fistula so that was all about the basics of B-scan. In the next video, I would go to into the details of the lesions and how to differentiate those lesions on a B-scan. So I hope that was useful. Thank you and have a nice day.